Hello, my name's Eric and welcome to this short little film about the South Common in Lincoln. There's a lovely photo of it now. Great place to go for a walk and exercise um, and gives cracking views across Lincoln. Um, it's called the South Common now. It was uh, known as Cannock Common up to about 200 years ago and it lies to the south of the city. Right sharply to the south, so it slopes downwards out of that camera shot and affords fantastic views across the city to the uh, magnificent cathedral you can just make out in the distance there. Horses now roam across the common and people like me exercise there. Dogs there but the common's got a very interesting history. And there's many archaeological features there that you can see if you know where to look. So I thought I'd do this little tour of the South Common and the archaeological things uh, as a fun little history and archaeological um, examination of a, of a nice sort of scenic part of Lincoln that I've wandered around many a time. Well, the oldest visible feature on the common is a Roman road nearly 2,000 years old. It's the course of the old Ermine Street, which ran from York through Lincoln to London, um, and it crossed the common. Uh, Ermine Street the, uh, is the later medieval name. It's not the Roman name. We don't know what the Romans called it. Um, because of the activity that's gone on over the years, I find it a bit difficult trying to disentangle which lumps and bumps are the Ermine Street. The archaeologists assure me that there's definitely the sign and the bank of the Ermine Street going across the common from north to south. Going across the common is a ditch with supplied water to an important establishment just outside the common. Uh, St Catherine's Priory was founded as a hospital in about 1100, became a priory in 1148. Now medieval hospitals don't just uh, treat the sick, they also act as a sort of hostel for travellers, for pilgrims, um, often adding accommodation for the long-term infirm. Now I got taught at a very Church of England school and got taught the typical attitude. The medieval church was uh, full of corrupt clergy, spent the whole time spreading ignorance and stealing off the poor. Well there was lots of pious members of the medieval clergy who dedicated their life to helping the poor and the sick. Um, it was probably at St Catherine's that uh, Eleanor of Castile, the wife of Edward I, was embalmed after dying at Harby, which is about 10 kilometres to the west of the city. Um, the Priory was dissolved in 1538, but there is a more modern church on the site. It had a sophisticated fresh water system and water was brought to the Priory from a pond and springs in the southeast common of corner of the common via a ditch which is still visible today and you can walk around it. It's a bit overgrown but you can follow the course of it as it goes down the hill towards St Catherine's. So if you're careful where you're walking um, and this is a little shot I took of me walking down through the ditch. You've got to watch where you're walking because as I say horses do uh, graze there and you don't want to stand in their leavings and you don't want to disturb any sort of wildlife or any birds. Um, there's a lot of animals I've seen, deer, I've seen um, the odd kestrel um, flying over the place and lots of other birds. So there's me walking along the course of the water course and it heads down the hill to where St Catharines would have been. There's also the um, Melandry or the Holy Innocence. Um, it's a rectangular feature you can see from the air uh, in the northwest corner and it's cut by an old railway line. Um, so this the little triangle to the southeast of the railway line um, was given over to allotments in the, uh, the uh, mid-20th century. 
Um, this was a uh, site of a hospital, the footprint of it is a site of a hospital that was there 1100 to about 1540 to the dissolutions. Here an old leper hospital where they were treated outside the city. In the medieval and the early modern period, the area was used for grazing and quarrying and eastern parts of the common weaven ploughed. Um, said that condemned um, people that were hanged were hanged high up on the top of the common and Lincoln being on a hill that had been viewed from across the city. Now two quarries survive on the common um, and they've been converted into attractive ponds. In 1757 the whole area was enclosed as, a, as common land um, and it's the area we can see today and the quarry now to stop. Um, now it became, then it became a place people could graze their animals, something people still do today. In 1867 the Great Northern Line was built connecting Lincoln through the villages of the south down to Grantham. Um, it cuts through the common but it was shut in 1965 though I think a short section continued to the gas works from the network for about five years afterwards. The bridges survive really well um, the line does survive as a cutting but it's flooded and quite overgrown. Um, a nice little bit of wild in the middle of a city. In 1844 the common was converted to a sort of park and there's railings were put up around the common they date to that uh, at that event. Um, as part of this process the southern or upper edge was uh, there was a promenade created which you can see pictures of there on the screen today and um, we can imagine the Victorian inhabitants of Lincoln strolling up and down and viewing across north to over to the city. Since 1976, it's become part of the Viking Way, one of these many long distance footpaths we have in England, and it runs from the Humber to Rutland. Why the Viking Way? Well, in the 860s, a great Viking army overran this part of the country, and many Danes settled in this area. So there's some of the views out across the city from the promenade. You can see the Lincoln City football ground in the left hand picture and you can see my dog in the right hand picture. So there you can see my dog sniffing her way along the promenade. There's seats being put there um, and little areas where the vegetation has been cut back so you can look north and see across the city. Now, there are some patches um, on the common where nothing grows and these seem to be sort of late Victorian, early 20th century rubbish dumps where you can see old bits of bottles and they, they're quite clearly sort of a hundred years or more old these bottles because they're very thick glass and you can see sort of classic Victorian bits of pottery with this sort of blue and white painted pots and uh, sometimes bits of decorated glass where now um, metal detecting is prohibited on the South Common um, and the only creatures allowed to dig up the common now are the moles. In the 19th century Britain had a relatively small standing army but large numbers of people volunteered in sort of part-time militia. In the mid 19th century these were reorganised as a volunteer force and in the early 20th century became the territorials. Now they survive on the common the sites of some of their uh, rifle ranges, the ones on the north part being destroyed by the railway, but there's two just above one of the ponds which are reasonably obvious. Um, the reason why you have your rifle range against the hill and shooting up hills if you miss the target then the bullets would presumably bury themselves in the slope above rather than flying across the city. During World War I troops were trained on the common um, and there's some World War I practice trenches. They're quite difficult to find. It's in quite an overgrown area and it's difficult to be certain that the lumps and bumps you find are definitely the right thing. 
Um, it's fascinating to to think about how they, they train people here and it's also fascinating to think about how modern warfare changed here because the first tanks were secretly tested here and there's a picture of what the first ever tank little willy with a covering over it so no enemy spies could see what it looked like as everyone um, who lives in Lincoln knows the first tank was designed and built here in Lincoln with fighting bogged down in the trenches of the western front all sides were looking to ways to use tracked vehicles to cross the muddy ground and in 1915 the first prototype was built at Foster's of Lincoln a factory just a stone's throw away from the common. There are flattish areas of the common with quite short grass and these mark fairways of an old golf course first built in 1893 as a nine holer um, later became an 18 holer during the two world wars the, uh, there was no golfing on the commons you don't really want to uh, try and uh, try and play golf while tanks are running across or people are digging practice trenches um, during in 1973 the council decided to use, stop using the common for these sorts of sporting activities and so the golf clubs had to move elsewhere but above where the quarries are there's some definite bits that look like fairways and greens and teeing off points in the northeast corner is a very flat area um, and that is uh, an old football ground well today horses roam the common um, and there's a lot of mole hills on that flat area so it's not exactly ideal for playing a game of football um, again 1972 when the council stopped sport activity happening on the common then the football ground um, was abandoned but if you enjoy football the uh, the road nearby is um, often full of cars people parked up when there's a match on at Lincoln City's ground at Sinsel Bank and people often park there and then do the short walk to the ground um, but the things that the mainly running around on the common at the moment are the horses which you can see in that picture in the distance well there's a lovely view um, looking south and uphill up the common to the spike of the International Bomber Command Centre which has recently been built overlooking the common and gives again gives spectacular views over Lincoln I hope you enjoyed that little uh, little excursion around the south common of, uh, of Lincoln and if you live nearby feel inspired to go and find some of these lumps and bumps whilst not disturbing any of the wildlife hope you enjoyed this film like and subscribe thank you goodbye